We need everyone to change everything. We need everyone. Life is all organisms working to survive these changes. Our bodies mostly water, still in our hearts, fire raging, burning to light our paths, so scientific that it's spiritual. The earth is humming, humming, an ancestral drumming, we're running out of time, we're running out of time. The end is near, or is it the beginning? Yeah, I think it's the beginning. Yeah, yeah, it's the beginning. I ain't going back to normal cause I'm ready for change Rearrange a whole dynamic, people over profits No more profits over planet Normal was grinding, normal was minding My business is futurable, but that's delusional It ain't suitable I like to dream like a scene, let's describe the inscrutable I break cages in your brain, they tried to make us go insane Say we couldn't feel the pain from Haiti to the JA Work to death, what's the payday? Oh, that's chocolate to rock with In the cradle of humanity, my black imagination can never reach capacity Fact is, black is so rich, it's impossible to mess with. That's why I'm crying, then I'm laughing like the grills in the middle passage. That's why I'm dancing, then I'm resting. Go on and tell the masses. Uh, divided, we're less strong like the diaspora wars. Twerk about it, dance about it. Go on and hit the floor. Our music, they adore them. Not ready to explore. Our diving bodies and our souls, so the truth gon' get exposed. Uh, uh, cause I ain't gon' to change everything. We need everyone. My name is Coco Pela, and um, I am so very excited and nervous to be here with you today. I just want to give a big shout out to Movement Generation, Climate Justice Alliance, and the New Economy Coalition. Oops, let me slow down. Um, and all of the artists who worked on this, um, this collaboration, very honored to be here. I am going to share uh, two songs. One is called Forward Eva, produced by Isaiah Mustafa. And the other one is called Whose World Green New Deal, produced by the late great Hot Beats. So without further ado, I need to share my audio from my computer. Oh, and big shout out to the Zoom wizards behind the scenes making everything move seamlessly. Yay, yay. Okay, let's see. So as soon as I'm able to share my audio from my computer, we'll get it rocking. Beautiful. Um, and thank you for joining us. All right. Y'all ready? You can't like uh, scream because I can't hear you because everyone's muted, but just take a deep breath. Bye. All right. So the first song is called Forward Ever. Can y'all hear it? So, hey, or whatever, backward, never. They say it, it works, so we get better. Ain't a problem without a solution. Never been a better time for revolution. Uh, or whatever, back whenever they say it get worse, but we get better. Ain't a problem without a solution. Never been a better time for revolution. Huh? Uh, never been a better time for revolution. Fail to be one more time. Never been a better time for 
Yep, thinking about my ancestors and the way they came on the ships. Bodies on bodies on bodies, men it make me sick. What they thought when they realized they survived the trip. What a gift they curse to carry up in your piss and listen. Then the sounds around the way, the birds are sounds around them. Now that went to latest, they trade us, use a whips and cages. Now I'm pacing, they face the nothing and make them what they did. So you know I'm saying, you're paying me, and I'm praying. I'm just laying they courage up in my day and my life and repay them. For the rays of sun, I'm blessed to breathe and live and thrive and lay This morning, yawning is down and it's finally dawning on me. Oh, geez, drop the dime. It's on me now, they finally standing on me. Or we're never back, we're never. They say it get worse, so it get better. Ain't a problem without a solution. Never been a better trip for revolution. Say, or we're never back, we're never. Say so, yeah, it get worse, so it get better. Ain't a problem without a solution. Never been a uh. Ain't about red or blue, win or lose, it's about green. Growth, life, change, riding. Y'all know this, but it ain't about Biden. Versus Trump, it's about me and you. Life or death, what we facing. Death and birth, same, we can place it. Only one and we cannot replace it. So painful to face it. I just don't get complacent. We ain't got to recreate a broken system. The youth needed us this time that we listen. We got the power to create something different. The new normal is a just transition. Or we're never, back we're never. They say it get worse, but we get better. Ain't a problem without a solution. Never been a better time for revolution. Ha, or we're never, back we're never. They say it get worse, but we get better. Ain't a problem without a solution. Never been a better time for my Never been a better time for my I can't hear you, but I know you're saying it. Uh, never been a better time for revolution. Hey. Okay. Bye. How y'all feeling? It's going crazy. People turn dancing in front of their Zoom screens. All right. Dope. So, <laughs> so um, I'm long-winded, so I'm not going to talk. I won't get caught up. I won't get caught up. So the next song, like I said, is called Whose World Green New Deal. Um, I released it on Earth Day 2020, um, and it was produced by Hog Beats, who is like a Bay Area legend who's no longer with us. And he was super juiced about combining the Bay Area sound with some revolutionary climate justice ideas. So just want to give love and respect to him. Um, here we go. Busy surviving and in a rush, bringing two breaths to live a place is not enough. So, what we gon' do? Uh. Okay. 
a chance to help and no pressure. Picture no racism, sexism, classism, pressure. Down in the separated movement, taking lives of people. That world we can build it, one that's full of people. We need a green new deal. Y'all ready? Are you sure you ready? You sure you ready? No racism, sexism, classism, pressing. Down in front of the movement, taking lives of people. That world we can build it. One that's full of people. We need to bring this deal. You know, wait a minute, wait a minute. Nervous, y'all. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. I'm gonna stop it there. Who's world is this? Who's world is this? Yo, yo, give it up virtually for the incredible G-O-L-D Gold, formerly known as Coco Pela. Give it up. Thank you so much for blessing us with that amazing opening and getting us started in the right way. My name is Ellen, and I'm a member of the MG Collective, and uh, I've been the tech lead for our Rekindle course series and a represent representative of our disability justice team. I use she, her, and or they, them pronouns. Uh, I'm an Asian person with long black hair, thick bangs. I have some plastic clear glasses on today and some silver hoops. Um, and I'm sitting in front of a bunch of beautiful artwork and family pictures. To get us started, I'll be covering some basic access and tech information. I want to shout out On Point Studios, who are the technical producers of this showcase, uh, making lots of magic happen behind the screen. They also designed this dope set. Um, I want to also shout out New Economy Coalition and their team for some of the graphics. Um, and we are also live streaming this event on Facebook and YouTube. So shout out to all of our folks watching live through those streams. And thank you for joining us no matter where you are um, and how you got here. Uh, first of my announcements, for those uh, with us here on Zoom, I invite you to please add your pronouns at the end of your name so we know who's here. Next slide. The uh, live captions are being provided today. Thank you to our captioner, Fenella. If you're here on Zoom to turn on captions, click on the closed caption icon in your Zoom controls. On the Zoom mobile app, you would tap meeting settings and toggle to turn closed captioning on. On Facebook and YouTube Live, you should also be able to turn on captions as well in the windows while you watch. Next slide. Thank you to Dana and Sarika, who are our ASL interpreters today. Our production team will make sure they're on screen at all times. Next slide. Um, thank you to Marianella and Andreina. They're our Spanish interpreters today. The Spanish interpretation is only available for those watching via Zoom. Um, we are using the built-in interpretation feature here. So just click on the interpretation icon in your controls and select a language channel to join. For those watching live streams, we are gonna record this in Spanish. So um, just know that we'll make sure the Spanish version is available soon after the event. Thank you to MG staff who are moderating the chat boxes here on Zoom in Facebook and on YouTube. Um, on Zoom here, they will also be translating most of the English chats to Spanish. We invite those of you who speak Spanish to offer chats in Spanish, if you'd like, throughout the showcase. 
We're recording today's showcase and we'll be providing that recording as well as the transcript and the Spanish interpreted recording in the coming week. Um, our access support person on Zoom today is Crosby. You can find them in the list of MG staff members. Uh, we have an MG in front of our name. If you need anything around making this more accessible to you or have questions about access. And thank you all for helping us do our best on this platform to increase access to our events, to our community members and comrades with disabilities and who are Spanish speakers. MG has committed to centering disability justice and language justice in our work, in our values, and in our practice. Um, we're working to challenge the historical ableism of our movements and better center the experiences and leadership of disabled folks and our immigrant, refugee, and migrant communities. This is one of many ways we're trying to truly live into that regenerative way of being together that centers sacredness of all people and beings and that takes all of and that really takes all of us. All right, thank you for your time and it is my absolute absolute pleasure and honor to now pass it on to the amazing magical uh, brilliant hosts and lead organizers of our showcase today. Trey Vasquez and Lael Camargo. Give them some love, y'all. What up, y'all? My name is Lael Camargo. I use they, them, theirs pronouns. I come to you from Kashaya, I mean, from Pomo territory on Santa Rosa, California. Um, I'm wearing some bright neon headphones. I got some bright neon text on a brown t-shirt. I'm gender non-conforming, half length hair, brown skin. Um, got a little bit of a white wall behind me and some white blinds. I'm very excited to be here with you all to showcase these amazing art projects. What's up everybody, buenas tardes. My name is Trey Vasquez, little behind the scenes secret. I'm actually in the same kitchen, in my kitchen where all the magic happens with Lael across the table from me. I'm so excited to be here. My pronouns are he, him, él. I'm a trans mask Chicano. I have a beard and a black beanie with a patterned uh, navy blue shirt on with a white wall behind me and a beautiful pink painting. I guess that's like more of magenta, a uh, painting of a hummingbird. And I am also so excited to be here. I even took a shower today. I'm wearing pants, not sweats. Like this is a big, a big deal, a big event. Uh, so I'll be co-emceeing with, with Lael today. Thanks, Trey. I'm actually in sweatpants because it's such a big day. Why not be comfortable? <laughs> Today's an event to remember. Y'all are getting an exclusive look at content that these amazing cultural workers and artists have been working on while Rekindle was going on. You'll hear more about what Rekindle is after our segment. Um, honoring that the work is so important for us to build something that is new to us, we're not going back to normal after this COVID pandemic. We're gonna build a new normal, something that is just for us, that centers our sacredness, that values our caring, and that honors our labor. And that we can can only do that through arts and culture. So we're so excited to bring, be bringing this to you all. That's right. Thank you, Lael. And part of that that labor in building this new world is following the path that our 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 movement ancestors and blood ancestors left left behind for us, um, and really embodying the work that it takes to continue to be in right relationship. So. One of the ways that we want to do that today is we're going to pass it off to our camarada, Angela Aguila, who's going to welcome us here with a land and labor acknowledgement. Passing it to you, Angela. Hi, everyone. Thanks, Trey and Lael. Uh, my name is Angela. I use she, they pronouns today. I'm a collective member and co-director with Movement Generation. I'm a brown femme person with long dark hair and purple highlights that you might not actually be able to see. I'm wearing a black top uh, and a blue Massane scarf. It's also got some flowers on it. And I'm sitting on a couch in front of a teal wall. Um, I'm gonna guide us now through a 
land and labor acknowledgement and honoring. So I wanna invite you to um, experience with your heart. So take a deep breath. An invitation to do that. So we're currently uh, in Ho Chi Minh, in Lejeune territory, the unceded ancestral, traditional, and forever lands that Chochenyo speaking Ohlone people have been in relationship with for centuries. These lands are also known as the East Bay, uh, Oakland, home of the Black Panther Party for Self-Defense, who's currently celebrating their 55th anniversary. Give it up. Uh, we are here with this land because of the relationship to land and all that that includes, right? All life, water, languages, ceremonies that the Ohlone people have kept sacred for generations. And we honor those relationships today. We're also here with this land and with the lands across Turtle Island because of the forced labor of displaced, missionized, enslaved indigenous people, including the indigenous people kidnapped from the continent of Africa and forced into chattel slavery on Turtle Island. We acknowledge the way their knowledge of place their knowledge as scientists, engineers, farmers, and healers was turned to labor to build wealth for European and Euro-descended people whose descendants continue to benefit from. We acknowledge the labor of the care workers, care providers, domestic workers, farm workers, the people who make the continuation of our human communities possible who are largely made up of the descendants of enslaved and detribalized Black and Indigenous people across Turtle Island, and also include people of the global majority who have been and continue to be forced to migrate from their Indigenous territories and lands across the world. We acknowledge their historically exploited, undervalued, and invisibilized labor today, and we lift up and honor the land-based and cultural knowledges that they bring with them. We acknowledge that the dominant worldview makes us believe that the value of our labor and work is dependent on our age and able-bodiedness. So today we also want to honor the work of our culture makers the, and the gifts that we all bring to these lands. I'm talking about the elders who are sharing recipes and telling stories to keep us alive the disabled organizer working daily from their bed, weaving together communities of care, the artists who move our spirits to imagine the worlds that are possible. And we honor the presence and playfulness of young people who remind us that the future lives in the present. So this land and labor acknowledgement is also an acknowledgement and solidarity commitment to our ancestors. Those who have our back, who are proud of us for gathering here today, who are celebrating with us, who are calling us to remember that we're still here. This small gesture of acknowledgement and honoring is a first step. And so we invite you to learn what lands you are on. Um, we can drop a link, or I think there's probably a link on the screen right now, um, as well as the histories of those lands and your bioregion, right? Including the history and process of colonization through labor and life source extraction and exploitation in your bioregion. Here in Oakland, we lift up Segorite Land Trust. So you can also check out their website to contribute to uh, rematriation efforts through the Shumi land tax, and also learn about the history of this bioregion and Ohlone territory. And finally, we invite you to contribute in any way you can to your local land back and reparations projects in your bioregion and to do so in the spirit of deep solidarity and in honor of all land, life, and cultures. I'm gonna pass it back to you now, Trey and Lael. Thanks. Gracias, Angela. Um, thank you so much for bringing us here. I know we're all joining from different places, but bringing us into our hearts, jumping into that spirit of acknowledgement uh, of resistance. 
and calling upon us to, to continue to live in right relationship and act accordingly, right? Uh, so thank you for that. We're going to go ahead and get into our program now. Uh, but first, we want to check in with you all. Like I said, we know we're tuning in from all different places. So if you are able, so if you're able and willing, uh, please drop in the chat. What's your name? And where are you calling in from? Did you look up on the nativeland.com uh, what your uh, lands you are fortunate enough to sit on? Take a moment. And while you're doing that, we also want folks to be thinking about what does cultural organizing mean to you? How have you experienced it? How have you seen it uh, be done in your community? We just want to ask folks to ruminate on that right now. As folks are communicating with each other, we're streaming in from many platforms. So hopefully folks are discussing where they're calling in from, where they're coming in from. And as we start to sit with this program, we just want to shout out and explain a little bit of Creative Wildfire. Creative Wildfire was happening alongside the collaboration of three organizations, Economy Coalition, Climate Justice Alliance, and Movement Generation. This was all happening during a large series called Rekindle. There's a lot of artists that were showcased here that actually participated in Rekindle as well as Creative Wildfire. And as we start to build a new normal, we know that it's essential to merge cultural shifts, new narratives, and a larger cultural strategy that centers us, our care, our labor, and the world that we need to reimagine to survive. To talk to us more about Rekindle and Creative Wildfire, we have Quentin Samkofa and Abbas Kali from Movement Generation. All right, peace everybody. Uh, my name is Abbas. Um, I go by he, him, his, um, and I'm with uh, Movement Generation. Um, and I came on just to give you all just a quick overview of uh, just all of how all of these series came together. So including Rekindle, the Creative Wildfire Project, um, as well as uh, the Manifesto. Um, so this time actually last year in fall 2020, um, movement generation folks uh, came together just because it was um, we felt like it was this um, really pivotal time in the in the during the pandemic where we felt like a lot of folks were hurting um, and struggling um, with just the shifts um, folks were losing their jobs um, folks were also losing people to COVID um, and also we felt like it was a, a time where folks were just kind of like there's this there was a grief of like do we folks who were kind of tired do we want to go back to normal you know what I mean um and also feeling like we needed a change like i felt like it was something that everybody felt like it was a it was an issue within our you know our system and the way that it was functioning um and we wanted to figure out just a way for us as a team to um how do we want to address this and what what project do we want to, to to launch at this time so we started um brainstorming um ideas um and one of the things that came up uh, came out of it was um was a manifesto we wanted to write a manifesto just to acknowledge um just the grief that folks were going through around um, not returning to normal and just how and just how um, this system continues to uh, prioritize profit over people. Um, so just in, in collaboration with um, the Climate Justice Alliance and the New Economy Coalition, um, we created a manifesto and we put and we launched that. Um, and uh, in addition, we also want to launch a, a series, um, a, a study series uh, for folks, which we call Rekindle. Um, and this, this series, when we called it Rekindle because we wanted to, to be focused around uh, rebridging relationships uh, because we understand the pandemic also put, um, put, you know, it just made it really hard for us to connect because everybody's online. So we wanted to figure out a way for organizers to be able to connect and um, continue to build that momentum especially just around this time. So we were able to gather folks from uh, different regions and pods from all over the, um, really all over the globe. Um, there was folks who, there was uh, regions in uh, specifically in the, um, the US, but also we have folks who tuned in from all over the globe. And uh, it was a series that was focused on, we had multiple to uh, topics, it was four sessions. Um, and uh, we really wanted to focus in on it being just being able to connect folks and also just for us all to learn together. and. Um, 
be able to uh, just just build that bridge. Um, and then the last part of, of that project also is uh, the Creative Wildfire Project, which you all are experiencing now, the showcase. Um, and I'll pass it over to Quentin to give a little bit of an overview of what the, uh, how we got here. Hello, everyone. All that information and the handoff. Uh, my name is Quentin Sankofa. I'm experiencing some internet issues, uh, so I hope my sound comes through a bit clear. Uh, I am wearing over-the-head uh, headphones with a black mic. I'm also wearing a black shirt. I am an African-American male identified person, and uh, I am one of the co-directors of Movement Generation. In terms of, uh, I think it's important that you all know, uh, for us, spread of wildfire 2.0. Uh, the first time we did creative wildfire, uh, was in 2014. At the time, our culture shift director, Josh Healy, uh, was one of our, our folks in the collective helping us explore uh, cultural strategy uh, and how we can move people politically that way. It began with a, it began with a, to hold a justice and ecology strategy retreat for artists and cultural workers and organizers to come together. At the end of that four day retreat, we have had a variety show, a showcase in person that attracted about 500 uh, folks or more uh, to witness some really beautiful art and performances. I've stopped sharing my camera with the hope that my audio becomes more clear when the Climate Justice Alliance and the New Economy Coalition, we wanted to bring back this idea of engaging artists with political education and um, cultural production. So Creative, uh, the Rekindle course series, and our Resist Manifesto. We underscore education is certainly one, but also cultural strategy plays a very big role in building movements. So we sought to connect with, uh, we began with the idea to connect with seven artists um, and we put out what's called, uh, and from there, we invited artists to apply um, for a, uh, a fellowship of sorts or artist uh, honorarium that would range uh, from $2,000 to $7,000. Uh, and the idea was that we would work together to deliver content um, to the artists with our partners. And then the artists would, on their own, uh, create any kind of, uh, and then we would in turn share those we're trying to accomplish here today with Creative Wildfire, Wildfire Artists Showcase. One of the most um, exciting part with seven artists, but we received over 100 applications. So we decided uh, to reach out to some of our funder allies and with their support, we were actually able to almost triple the amount of artists we offered. Uh, uh, the stipends to, but this also tripled our budget. Uh, but we were able to meet most of the cost uh, with the support of the Women Donors Network, the California Endowment, and the 11th Hour Project. There is a small gap that we need to raise to fully cover the stipends that we have provided the artists. If you would like to help us cover that gap, please visit backslash donate to make a donation to help us fund the artists who you're going to 
clear, they're all going to be fully funded, whether you all donate or not. But you can help MG cover our costs so that we don't go into um, a negative situation <laughs> with the project budget. Uh, so thank you for that. And I'm going to turn it back over to our host. What up, y'all? Uh, yeah, so thank you so much for that, Abbas. Thank you and for the, the audio technical difficulties. Y'all know we live in the virtual space. We've been in Zoom for about a year, uh, a year and a half now. I don't know, what is time? How long? Three years now? It feels like 50 years, maybe. Uh, so yeah, this, this next segment is, uh, we're gonna start off with an artist-to-artist conversation. Creative Wildfire is, an artist uh, cohort of people who created 14 different projects. Some of them were individually led, some of them were different collaborators to the span that we don't even know. But we want to make sure to give folks some space to talk about their work. Um, so Trey, I'm going to have to boot you off the main stage. And I'm going I'm to bring up Maddie Madlines Clifford and Cece Carpio on a conversation about what it means to be an artist and maybe hear a little bit about Creative Wildfire was. What up, Cece? What up, Maddie? Hey, how you doing? I'm doing Thank pretty good. Thank you for here. Yeah, I'm super excited to be here. Before we start off, I'm going to read y'all's bio because you two are some amazing, profound artists I think people should hear a little bit more about. I'm going to start off with you, Maddie. Maddie Madlines Clifford is a creative powerhouse. With over a decade of experience as a rapper, poet, educator, and intersectional feminist activist, she's mastered lyrical ceremonies within lockdown facilities on college campuses, and even as far away as Uganda. Maddie was nominated for a Grammy for a collab with Alphabet Rockers, shot a stunning music video with Emmy-nominated director Contessa Gales, and Spitfire Bars on the North Pole show season two anthem Flame Go alongside Sinai and Dante Clark. Most recently, Maddie has taken up digital creation, making funny educational and artistic short form video content on Reels and TikTok. Thank you for being here, Maddie. Thank you for having me. Cece, I'm gonna go next to you. Uh, using acrylic ink, aerosol, and installation, Cece Carpio tells stories of immigration, ancestry, collective movements, and our stories of resiliency. She documents evolving traditions through combining folkloric forms, old portraits, natural elements with urban art techniques. Living and working in the Bay Area, she is inspired by the cultural potency of communities of color and of the prominent history of social movements that have become influential expression for the rest of the world we see. Welcome, Cece. It's great to be here with all this amazing and brilliant minds. So, so I'm so excited that you're both here. And one of the things about you two that is excited for this conversation is y'all are constantly pushing the edge of what it means to be an artist, to be an organizer, to be a person of color, to stand up for what you want. But I really want to hear what did creative wildfire mean to you as specifically as an artist and as a mover? Is it okay if we start with you, Cece? Yes, sure. Um... Creative Wildfire, I think what was very special about it for me was meeting all this artists that's come from all parts of the nation and hearing their work, hearing their perspective and, you know, being reunited with folks like Maddie, who we definitely have crossed within communities, but actually having the intentional time of talking about our work and our art. So um, that was... Um, always inspiring and always um, just a great motivation to keep doing the work that we're doing because though with Creative Wildfire, one of the one of the tasks was trying to really imagine what the new normal is for us. What I'd also like to think of it is like how do we continue this alternative form in which we've been doing for a very long time? Because before the pandemic, um, and before all this unprecedented time is what we call them now, um, there's so many folks that have been doing this work and want to be able to give that shout out and acknowledge and recognize that. I think this pandemic just elevated the work to a whole new level, but we've been doing this and it's been, you know, I mean, Maddie has been on the path 
for decades. And so it's a lot of different folks um, within this cohort and just wanting to be able to give them a shout out, give them props and the fact that we're still doing it and that we're still here making it happen is already a sign of victory. So thank you Creative Wildfire for allowing us to do what we do. And, and I think with this particular project that I'm working on, I'm just super excited to be collaborating with some amazing, fascinating movers and shakers out here in, in the Bay, San Gregorio Coast to Oakland, um, doctors and lawyers and rock stars and, 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 and be able to create some visual storytelling for the work that this collective has been doing. So I'm excited about that. Thanks, Cece. Maddie, what did Creative Wildfire mean to you? Um, it definitely had, like, looking back, a life-changing, like, impact on me. And it, that might seem like an over-exaggeration, but it's actually not at all, because I didn't really see myself as, like, a climate warrior, necessarily. Um, I think it's still, even though I'm from Seattle, even though I've been in the Bay for a minute, I didn't see all the in and inextricable connections between um, social justice movements and the environment and how they're all interwoven. Um, I think I kind of understood that in a general, sen a general sense. And also just from working with people like Coco, for example, I got to shout out Coco because she's been doing incredible work at the margins or the intersections rather between hip hop and environmentalism. So she was one of the first people that I really was like, wow, you can write raps about this. Um, you can like work with young black girls about what they envision for the future for themselves because gen z is really going through a lot right now um, in terms of how do they even imagine what the world's going to look like for them and so it was really life-changing for me because i just did a lot of deep diving into research not only the the expert um like the classes that we got to take as part of this process but also on my own like I started to you know I was learning more about like for example residential schools and all of the things that have been going on in terms of like how they're excavating the atrocities that have happened in the past and how that impacts today like um, the United Nations the an international tribunal just charged the U.S. with uh, five counts of genocide one of which was environmental racism so all of these things I'm, I'm researching now and they've actually actually been a key component of my life because I've been working uh, with youth impacted by mass incarceration for so long, but I didn't see all of the connections between how these impacted also the climate, environmentalism, and also the, the climate crisis we're in. So that's why I would say that this, this project, it, it really had a life-changing impact on me. And I can't thank all of you enough for like all the work that you put in behind the scenes because I know y'all did put in work. So thank you so much. Really appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks, Maddie. You definitely bring up so many key points that keep us activated and that really helps propel why cultural work and specifically centering artists through our social and political movements are important. Yeah. I am curious, y'all are creating some dope stuff. I know, Cece, we're going to see your stuff in a couple of weeks. Maddie, you got a whole album coming out. Mm -hmm. How do you want the world to receive this creation? Yeah, I'm just, I'm, I gotta shout CC out too, like, um, the project just sounds incredible. And also, I really appreciate how this process allowed us, because I think people love the art, like they love the entertainment at the end, but they don't see like, it's so much about the process as well. For us as artists, that's actually where the sacredness comes out. Um, that's where the collaboration comes out. For me, I was kind of working alone a lot. Um, I worked with one producer from uh, New Orleans. And he made all the instrumentals, but I did all of the writing myself and I was able to record um, 15 short form songs and all of them have to do with a different aspect of the climate crisis. And then, um, so the whole album is coming out November 15th. It's 20 short form songs. I use short form as a particular um, way to uh, catch people's attention because I'm a TikToker, I'll admit it. I'm a TikToker, I love TikTok, okay. <laughs> And um, people it's are okay. kind of like retaining information that way. But I think because I'm a teacher, like I have to get people's attention really fast. So I was, I, I was actually thinking from almost like a marketing standpoint, because we know, like, for example, like Facebook tries to like keep the climate crisis from, from us talking about it and, and understanding it. And so I was like, how can I capture people's attention? How can I get like kind of in their mind? And so it's called Down Chance because it's actually a head nod to um, Bob Marley and the Whalers. 
uh, chant down Babylon, which is a song, you know, obviously chanting down Babylon, but I'm chanting down all the systems and structures from like an intersectional feminist perspective. So that's what my project is. And I just like really appreciate just all the artists, just all the talent um, and yeah, all the people that are involved. So thank you. Yeah. Cece, what about you? How do you want the world to receive what you're going to create? I just want to say, I'm just excited to hear about it. You're talking about it now. I'm like, I can't wait for it to drop. So I'm excited. Um, you know, I think receive for the work that I'm doing has been, it's been amazing. I mean, I'm just consistently just mind blown with the people that I'm surrounded by being able to do this work. I mean, as I said earlier, I'm working with farmers from doctor, doctors to rock stars, to artists, to healers, to lawyers um, with in the land that is so sacred and the project that's so sacred that's serving us all. Um, so essentially I'm doing visual translation for the Deep Medicine Circle project. And Deep Medicine Circle is a project founded by Dr. Rupa Myra, who just recently wrote a book um, called Inflamed the Anatomy of Injustice. And he talks about just how our health, the, the health of our body and how that connects with institutional infrastructures and the racism and the oppressions that we face. Um, it's, it's, it's deep, it's dope, it's amazing, it's poetic. You all should pick a copy. Um, but based on that book and based on the work on the farm that um, we're working on here in San Gregorio, which is about 10 acre, piece of land that is being farmed right now from natural native medicines to actual perishable vegetables to gonna be feeding folks in the Bay Area that don't have access to food. And, and it's taking us a while because you know we're supposed to visualize that. <laughs> um, but what I really love about project and the support the Creative Wildfire has been able to do is beyond thinking about the crisis in which we've been embedded on, this climate crisis that we've been embedded on, is actually really visualizing what we envision different and, and focusing on that um, and focusing on the folks that's doing that work, and the work that's been done so that we can continue it and, and really um, really acknowledge the issue and acknowledge that it is a crisis, but also acknowledge that there's been a lot of work being done to combat it mm -hmm. and that we're part of that, you know, and that we're actually here actively doing it. So it, it's been such a big, huge learning experience because I feel like the folks that I'm um, in, in, in this true collaboration, I've been learning so much from all these brilliant minds, um, but also these are folks who are, are doing what they preach, who are actually have the analysis, have the practice and putting it in, put it in action for, for all and everyone else to experience. So it's, you know, um, it's amazing to be surrounded by the amazing work, but also to be part of, of, of the visioning of what that could potentially look like. And, um, and it's a big, huge responsibility that I don't take lightly and that's taking our time and doing it thoughtfully um, to know that it is a very comprehensive and, and it's work that's been, um, that's been cultivated through a long period of time. I mean, yeah, I think the time to invest in the artists, specifically BIPOC artists, trying to shift and create this new world. The time is now, the time has come, culture has adjusted. I wish I could stay with you all longer and just talk more about what y'all are gonna be showing us. And I just am so grateful that I got to witness y'all's journey and for everybody to see what you create. And as you've mentioned, it's about the process as much as it is about the content. Thank you, Maddie and Cece for grounding us in such a powerful discussion. I wanna pivot us, us, I wanna pivot us to a powerful live reading from storytellers Karina Hurtado Karen Hurtado and Diana Rosario with a time-lapse illustration from Julio Salgado. I'll hand it over to y'all. Thanks, Leia. <laughs> and thank you, Maddie and um, Cece for, for that beautiful conversation. My name is Karina and my pronouns are she, they, I'm a cultural worker. And I just wanna briefly introduce our project before Diana blesses us with a uh, live reading. 
Uh, we have a children's book exploring the concept of what generative, um, what the generative economy, economy looks like. And the book title is All Aboard the Freedom Express. The premise is a BIPOC, a BIPOC uh, gender nonconforming child takes us through Turtle Island, their home and our future after the big transition, which is essentially us as a society moving away from going back to normal um, and leaning into a care economy. Originally, we wanted to capture the local organizing history um, uh, of, of our, our uh, home neighborhood, Jackson Heights, Queens in New York. A lot of the mutual aid and community uh, fridges and other efforts that popped up just sporadically based on our deep, out of need, but also, which we know um, were, were being led by folks who were had been doing or grassroots organizing um, even before the pandemic. Um, we, the goal essentially of the children's book is um, to plant seeds of, plant seeds within children and our young people to recognize the spaces and the concepts of the care economy. Um, the book, we will be translating the book into seven different languages and it'll be available free virtually. Um, we aren't there yet. We have been having a really uh, process heavy and beautiful and enriching um, artistic process. Um, I think as I think uh, Maddie or I think Maddie or Cece just said like the sacredness of, of the artistic process we have been savoring. Um, really quickly, I just want to uplift uh, some of the things that uh, we some of the content, the movement content that we've been studying as a group um, that has led us to the creation of the story which um, Karen has brought in um, Mariam Kaba's um, children's book. And we studied, we studied those along with other children's literature, movement children's literature, such as the Water Protectors. Um, we read together the, the letter from year 2071 by Professor Barbara Ransby and, um, and the message from the future featuring Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez and a lot of our movement folks. Um, and also participating in the in the in the creative wildfire political education sessions, the rekindle the rekindle series, which were really a gift for us. The story development, um, so that we focus on, so we could reach different learners um, at different ages and different stages, um, was really grounded in, in four things: the visuals, which you will be getting a preview of today. Julio Salgado, a movement uh, beloved movement artist, has uh, graced us with. So visuals for you to look at, um, but but the the visuals at the end of the book will be representing our political reality, right? It'll give learners um, a a preview of what regenerative economics looks like in our society based on wins that we have already had. You know, what does green public housing look like? Cooling stations, food forests, um, wind turbines and solar panels, and green and care workers in our communities. The script, the script was also a tool for, um, that, that we focused on specifically the script, which you will hear today, um, uh, is, is supposed to communicate the concepts on a soul level, right? We want folks to be able to recognize um, and, and children and families to be able to recognize uh, these concepts on a soul level. The device that we use in the script is repetition. So you'll hear a lot of repetition specifically around the concept of giving life. Um, and then also we borrowed from somatics uh, therapy um, and from a non-ableist perspective, we tried to integrate um, reconnecting with our bodies. So integrating that in the stories as well. And then the last two things that I'll say is that it's meant to be read intergenerationally, just so we are having conversations with, um, with our children and, and caregivers around some of these practices um, that you'll be hearing about in the book. Um, and there'll be a follow-up section where folks can reflect a little bit deeper um, around the care practices and care policies that are, and how they impact their lives. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Diana so that she could bless us with a reading. Um, hope you all enjoy and thank you so much. Hi, my name is Diana Rosario. I go by she, they, and I hope this story speaks to many of you, and here we go. All aboard the Freedom Express, where we ride into the future as neighbors and arrive into the present as friends. Hi, my name is Sol. I am Sun. It means sun. 
My pronouns are they, them, and I'll be your guide as we journey through Turtle Island. Can you see it? More than a time and place in the future, Turtle Island is a way of being with each other and the land. Some call it a dimension, others a sanctuary. I call it a home where everything is designed to give life to people and the planet where everybody is cared for. But it wasn't always this way. Before the big transition, it was normal for families to go hungry, be separated, live without homes, the planet to be destroyed. The majority of people knew in their hearts that normal didn't work. We could no longer find ways to explain why some people had to risk their lives so others could stay at home safely. We needed change, a place where everyone's right to life was protected and with generations of hard work, Turtle Island came to be. First stop, Mangrove Bay. Let's start our trip by taking care of our bodies with some cool, crisp water. Since we know, water is life. Welcome to Mangrove Bay. Our ancestors fought hard to protect and grow these trees, and now these trees protect us and allow us to grow. The roots of these mangroves go so deep that they help the trees stand strong and lessen the impact of hurricanes. The mangroves teach us that deep roots protect us against big storms. Did you grab some water? Let's go on to our next stop, the care center. One of my favorite places whenever I need an extra hug or help with my homework. Feeling connected to the people we live with gives us life. Deep connections are also like deep roots. The best part about this place is that the elders always have stories to tell. Exchanging life stories with people who care for us gives us life. Check out our open streets. These streets remind us to slow down, to play, to breathe. On Turtle Island, we can all breathe. We know that fresh air gives us life. Let's take a deep breath in. In until we can feel that air up, fill up our bellies and then slowly let it out. Just like deep roots protect us against big storms, deep breaths help us with big emotions. Mm, my favorite feeling. How do you feel after taking a deep breath? Next stop, the Marsh and Sylvia houses. That first floor window is where I live with my family. Making sure everybody has a home and that they feel safe there gives us all life. See those? They're solar panels and wind turbines to create en energy in a way that doesn't harm the environment. We don't want to take away life from Earth. But it's not just the fancy technology that lets us live in harmony with the Earth. Making decisions together about the things that will impact us every day gives us life. Deep commitments keeps us connected across distances. Ooh, a butterfly. She must have come from the food forest. We all take turns planning and picking our favorite fruits and veggies here. My brother uses some of these to make us green smoothies in the morning. And my grandma comes to pick herbs to make medicine for when we have a cold or a tummy ache. Fresh food is full of life. Over there is where the bees and the butterflies roam free and come to snack. The pollen-rich flowers gives life to our non-human relatives. Ooh, these mangoes make me so happy. And when I'm happy, I like to dance and sing. No music, no problem. What do you like to do when you feel happy? You know, deep joy protects us from forgetting. And now for our last stop on the Freedom Express, the Freedom Circle. At the Freedom Circle, we gather for celebrations that connect us to each other and other communities around the world, welcome new people into our neighborhood, and talk with healers who can help when we have a big disagreement with each other. The space to be ourselves in the presence of others gives us life. Come, this is my favorite place in Turtle Island, the Statue of Hope, because deep hope is like deep roots. The statue represents all our past, present, and future freedom fighters, community builders, life protectors, and life givers. Look, what do you see? You give us life. Okay, friends, I know goodbyes can be hard. So before you go, I want to leave you with a gift. The life watch will signal when something in your world gives you life or drains you of it. When the little handle is all the way at empty, come back. You can always come back and ride the Freedom Express to Turtle Island. Just remember to dig deep and find your roots, connection, commitments, breath, 
joys, and spaces. And bam, you'll be back on the Freedom Express, where we ride into the future as neighbors and arrive into the present as friends. See you later, Freedom Friends. That's amazing, Deanna. Thank you so much for reading. Thank you. Um, that was such a great story. It's been so beautiful to watch that process. We're going to jump into our next um, segment, which is going to be a panel with uh, Amir and Jackie Fon. We'd love to bring y'all on stage. I think my co-host Trey is going to be joining me too. All right. <laughs> I'm pulling up my, my script at the moment so I don't get lost. I got really caught up in that story. I was like really watching those replays. I'm like, how did he do that? Um, so yeah, thank you so much for that. I'm excited to talk with Amir and with Jackie. These are two visual artists who were a part of Cultural Wealth, uh, Creative Wildfire. Um, I'm still like scrolling, trying to find my notes here. Um, but I'm excited to talk to you all because you're amazing, amazing visionaries. A lot of the visual work doesn't translate well on video or streaming as well, but it definitely does so great on social media. And I know when everybody sees it, they're gonna love it. But before I, we jump into the panel and hearing from you two, I'm going to go ahead and introduce y'all. Um, Amir Kadar, they them pronouns, is Sierra Leonean American artist, designer, and educator from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Their main mediums are poetry, fibers, and digital art. They are actively experimenting and growing as an artist through establishing relationships to ways of making. But their practice has always been grounded through Afrofuturism, gender theory, beauty, and ancestral practices. Thanks for joining us, Amir. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> yes. Um, I'm going to introduce Jackie. Jackie Fon, Yurok Washoe, Surigaonon. Sorry, sorry, Jackie. I should have practiced that one. Is a graphic illustrator for users that uses her skills to uplift Indigenous movements. She empowers herself and those who engage with her work through her illustrations of strong Indigenous warrior friends educates vis through visual storytelling and envisions a future where everyone can thrive. She currently lives in Aqua Chesne, New York with her partner and baby. Recently, she has started a radical art studio, Fish Bear Studios with her family. Welcome, Jackie. Hey everybody, it's so awesome to be here. Um, it's pronounced Yurok um, wa and Washo and Surigaonan and we live in Aqua Chesne. It's okay, it's always a mouthful. Now, you know, what's so funny is I always, we talk about this all the time and I feel like I've heard you say it to me so many times and I just, I didn't clock and I didn't practice those all on me. So word to the wise, y'all, make sure to research your things and do that Google listening of how people say shit because then you end up doing this kind of stuff. But I want to pivot us to just kind of hearing more from you all on your work. Uh, Trey, I'm going to pass it over to you to see if you want to introduce us with the first panelist question. Definitely. It's so great to meet you all finally here virtually. I've gotten a chance to have some glimpses of your work and have been admiring from afar. Um, but I'm just going to jump into the first question to y'all. So uh, why did you why did you pick what you focus on your art on um, the imagery and the text that you did? So what made you pick uh, what you did? Um, for me, I was really inspired by the Creative Wildfire Manifesto. Um, and I just wanted to visualize some of the ideas that were set out inside of there and like try to create a visual representation of what that path would look like for an individual or just like an alternate person. Um, so for the first image, I used the study pillar um, and I just drew someone braiding, but like with hair from their ancestors and from the earth. And because I was just thinking like all the systems described or the imagined systems we're describing have already been present in the world, in like ancestral spaces and other timelines. And we're just doing the work of bringing that here. I also just think it's amazing how like our hands remember to braid, um, especially through all the subjugation that we've been through. Like we still have these talents from our ancestors and they don't disappear. Um, for the second image I, that was based off of the fund pillar. And I wanted to display a transaction that was not exploitive in the ways that capitalism exploits and turns transactions into nasty things. So it's a person giving another person seeds while the person is giving 
them flowers that came from those seeds. So it's an exchange of goods that have an immediate need as opposed to things that have speculative or conceptual meaning, <laughs> um, which is just money. So, and I just wanted to think about like, what ways can we facilitate transactions that are powerful and generative um, for everyone involved. And the last image was based off of the act um, pillar. And I just wanted to show two people in a garden, just having a good time, um, <laughs> growing the seeds and like enjoying the process of being involved in this new liberatory economy. That was beautiful. I'm so glad folks got to see your art. Uh, I wish, I'm so excited for people to see it. I wish I could sit with it and just like really look at it. I know that I've been, uh, I've been so uh, blessed to see that process. I'll hand it over to you, Becky. For me, the process was really, was interesting because I, I, I also went off the manifesto and then it just became one thing because I really wanted to have it as a serial series. And then the illustrations just kind of took on their own life. One of them was food, food justice. And I originally started it off as like um, indigenous people taking um, their indigenous knowledge to help farm and bring back that knowledge back to the community. And then it became more because it's more than just indigenous people living on the land now. And it's like, how do we create um, a world of, a farming where everyone's cultures and knowledge can like save the land because monocropping is just like really horrible and and then it just like kept spiraling and spiraling as they all became like a series piece with each other i because i did three illustrations and this one that's being shown right now is about how like if we just do traditional feet like um gardening and farming all of it will just will heal itself animals be fed cities will be fed small communities and food deserts will be fed and all the traditional knowledge will like just help bring that all back and everyone will be fed. So, yeah. What a uh, beautiful concept that <laughs> unfortunately in this current society is just like our basic needs just like is that's what we're asking for that's like legit what we're hoping for in this new normal. I am really excited that we're finally getting to see this. And I'm just curious, how would you all like to see these pieces um, impact the communities that you represent, um, your fans, and also just in general, like our social and political movements? I can go first again. Um, so I definitely, I feel like just as artists and just like artists broadly, like visual artists, performers, writers, um, everybody who like has some kind of creative output, we have a specific power over our imagination and just the domain of imagination in general. Um, and when we utilize that, we can also help activate other people's imaginations because one of the goals of white supremacy and like all the systems that are sitting on us is that they try to like make our imaginary possibilities as small as possible and our art allows people to interpret it and through their interpretations of these pieces they can create new possibilities that might not exist in the concrete world and I don't know I just think that's like extremely powerful because like imagination is just like such an untapped resource in spaces often movement spaces sometimes too and when we're not present in these spaces or like we're just used as like accessories in these spaces, the organizing and like the outputs of organizing come out different. So I just think it's, it's so, so, so important that we're involved and I hope our art, you know, does something, inspires something beautiful in people. That was so beautiful. <laughs> I just would like to see this art be used in like youth spaces because a lot of these concepts are just I want to say like new, it just like so like just bringing the past and in, back into modern spaces and just having that like with other communities because I was talking with my community and a lot of them didn't really think about that outside of like our own our reservation because so I was trying to get the language on the posters translated by my sister in the Philippines and these concepts were so different for her like just even the concept of loyal to the soil she was like is this love for your country and it just like really 
like broke that wall down of like um just translation for me and these concepts like how can we get these concepts like normalized and i've like i'm like only the youth can do that (laughs) i don't want to put it on the youth but they're really the ones that are like they can help us understand better yeah y'all bring up some really key pieces around wanting to have some political activation and also just inspire radical imagination. Like these are just two things that we really need and that it's essential for us to integrate into our social movements. There, you are all highlighting different themes. Like these are things that are highlighted in the manifesto. These are things that a lot of these three amazing organizations, Climate Justice Alliance, Movement Generation, New Economy Coalition always push out in rhetoric and theory and, and all of that. I am curious if there was like one specific issue that you highlighted in your pieces that you would really like folks to activate around and how you would want them to activate around. We can see it. I see the future through your y'all's vision. What can people do now? That's such a loaded question because like for me currently, I'm just at home being a mom and doing what I can from home. And to be to activate right now, I'd really, really would love to see like people. One of the illustrations I did was on clean energy, which is poses the question, what is clean energy? And like to even get there, it's like, how do we take this power grid back and give people back, give the power back to the people? Cause I've done a previous illustration like a year or two before doing this creative wildfire project. And like, that was also the question, like clean energy and like, how do we activate the people? And I was just like, man, I guess the first thing is like, just get educated on it and like how we can have these conversations with our family and just take the steps and like breaking away from, from just dirty energies and like how we can do it better, I guess. Um, I think for me, I would say, I would think about like the study piece art, the study art illustration, something like that. And then, <laughs> um, and like focusing on that specifically, I would say we can all just get in tune um, with the forces that are around us and like try to invoke our ancestors or the spirits or just whatever is like feeding us um, and try to make space for those in our lives and especially in our activism. Um, because without those things, we're very ungrounded. And we always do have something in me is like we always can act, but we cannot always act just because of how things work. But I feel like prepping yourself for the times where action is necessary and then also like constantly remaining open to education and staying grounded are necessary, especially in the moments where we're able to rest. So I would just say, I hope that people can reflect, meditate, and do all that. I love that. Rest and care. And let's take the power grid back. Like two very concrete things. Yeah, I just have one more reflection for you all is how was creative wildfire for you? What did it mean to you as an artist to be creating the way that you did? It was a really good process for me. Um, I enjoyed just the amount of freedom that we had as soon as like I realized that we were free just to make whatever we wanted (laughs) um something in me like kind of broke a little bit because I was like I went into it like okay this is going to be like a normal design commission and I'm just going to have to do like what people tell me to um but just having like all that space to do what we wanted and like create the images that we desired that was really important to me um I'd also been thinking of some of these images for a very long time I wanted to do like a series of three or like a triptych, if you will. (laughs) Um, And I finally got to do that. So like, that was very rewarding for me, just like on a very personal level. And then it was also just rewarding to like interact with these ideas in a way that was, um, that was self-guided. And I really enjoyed all the communal time as well. It was such a beautiful project to work on. It's It was my first project since I've had my baby. And it was our, my first project with my partner in our new studio. So it was so powerful just to bounce ideas off of someone rather just be do my own art in my head. And it just really like brought out the collaborative teamwork since like COVID happened with someone else 
that's not just my friend, but like my partner. So I was like, oh my gosh, we have such different views and just trying to be on the same page and like have that come across visually and having our baby like being our key, like advisor of the project. <laughs> so that was just a beautiful process. That's amazing, y'all. Yeah, we're so grateful to have been in this practice with you all. I think for a lot of folks who are watching in that are from movement groups, social justice organizations, maybe you're just a political activist, maybe there's you're an organizer, maybe you just care about some of the things that um, these three organizations are pushing out. Really think about how you can advance our political work through arts, through culture, and integrating such dope folks, because we're definitely seeing the fruits of our labor here. Y'all have been doing amazing. We're so grateful that y'all joined and accepted to be a part of this cohort. Amir and Jackie, thank you so much for um, being here with us. We're gonna move over to a little break in a minute, but I wanna hand the mic over to my co-host, Trey. Again, so, so much gratitude to you, Amir, so much gratitude to you, Jackie, and excited to continue building with y'all. Yeah, it's just echoing uh, Nayed's uh, gratitude. So, so many beautiful words, so much richness in what you all shared from your creative process. Thank you for giving a glimpse into that, um, into this powerful uh, way that you're arting and culturing and inspiring these movements for liberation that we're a part of. Um, so yeah, like I said, it, we're gonna move into a 10 minute break. Uh, so give folks opportunity to take care of yourself, uh, grab something to drink, a snack, take a bio break, whatever you need, uh, and feel free to enjoy this amazing music by Maddie Madlines Clifford, who we were in conversation earlier with, uh, and we will see you all back here in 10 minutes. Look, ah. Uh. Ancient as the future, like the earth, I have no ruler passing through on this plane of existence. So this is through kisses like glitter, stardust and goddess. We trust fierce fairies destroy the gender binary. Ancient to flags is a hex against the patriarchy. It's all malarkey in our bodies. Uh, bad mouth and machismo. I'm naughty, nerdy, and lethal. Me hands and my people move the needle on the closed minded for a movement, but rewinded. Land back to the first nations. I'm saying fire, rage, and smoke all up in our lungs. Why you think I'm banging on these war drums? Here to the streets, favelas, the slums. Empty stomach like a punch in the gut. Hating women, why you think we so stuck? I'm stupid, stupid oh. I'ma need my money, wrap it oh. I'm really rapping though. Hush. This massive sound is in my blood. I give the youth them nothing but love. Famous. Look, uh. Ancient as the future, like the earth, I have no ruler passing through on this plane of existence. So distance through kisses like glitter, stardust and goddess. We trust fierce fairies destroy the gender binary. Ancient to flex, it's a hex against the patriarchy. It's all malarkey in our bodies. Uh, bad mouth and machismo, I'm naughty, nerdy, and lethal. Me hands and my people move the needle on the closed minded for a movement, but rewind it. Land back to the First Nations, I'm saying fire, rage, and smoke all up in our lungs. Why you think I'm banging on these war drums? Here to the streets, favelas, the slums. Empty stomach like a punch in the gut. Hating women, why you think we so stuck? I'm stupid, stupid oh. I'ma need my money, wrap it oh. I'm really rapping though. Hush. This massive sound is in my blood. I give the youth them nothing but love. Famous. Look, uh. Ancient as the future, like the earth, I have no ruler passing through on this plane of existence. So distance through kisses like glitter, stardust, and goddess. We trust fierce fairies destroy the gender binary. Ain't just a flex, it's a hex against the patriarchy. It's all malarkey in our bodies. Uh, bad mouth and machismo, I'm naughty, nerdy, and lethal. Me hands and my people move the needle on the closed minded for a movement, but rewind it. Land back to the First Nations, I'm saying fire, rage, and smoke all up in our lungs. Why you think I'm banging on these war drums? Here to the streets, favelas, the slums. Empty stomach like a punch in the gut. Hating women, why you think we so stuck? I'm stupid, stupid oh. I'ma need my money, wrap it oh. I'm really rapping though. Hush. This massive sound is in my blood. I give the youth them nothing but love. Famous. Look, uh. Ancient as the future, like the earth, I have no ruler passing through on this plane of existence. So distance through kisses like glitter, stardust, and goddess. We trust fierce fairies destroy the gender binary. Ain't just a flex, it's a hex against the patriarchy. It's all malarkey in our bodies. Uh, 
Bad mouth and machismo, I'm naughty, nerdy, and lethal. Me hands and my people. Move the needle on the clothes minded for a movement, but rewind it. Land back to the First Nations, I'm saying fire, rage, and smoke all up in our lungs. Why you think I'm banging on these war drums? Here to the streets, favelas and slums. Empty stomach like a punch in the gut. Hating women, why you think we so stuck? On oh, stupid, stupid oh. I'ma need my money, rap it oh. I'm really rapping though. Hush. This massive sound is in my blood. I give the youth them nothing but love. Famous. Look, uh. Ancient as the future, like the earth, I have no ruler passing through on this plane of existence. So distance, so kisses like glitter, stardust, and goddess. We trust fierce fairies destroy the gender binary. Ancient to flex, it's a hex against the patriarchy. It's all malarkey in our bodies. Uh, bad mouth and machismo, I'm naughty, nerdy, and lethal. Me hands and my people move the needle on the closed minded for a movement, but rewind it. Land back to the First Nations, I'm saying fire, rage, and smoke all up in our lungs. Why you think I'm banging on these war drums? Here to the streets, favelas and slums. Empty stomach like a punch in the gut. Hating women, why you think we so stuck? On oh, stupid, stupid oh. I'ma need my money, rap it oh. I'm really rapping though. Hush. This massive sound is in my blood. I give the youth them nothing but love. Famous. Look, uh. Ancient as the future, like the earth, I have no ruler passing through on this plane of existence. So distance, so kisses like glitter, stardust, and goddess. We trust fierce fairies destroy the gender binary. Ain't just a flex, it's a hex against the patriarchy. It's all malarkey in our bodies. Uh, bad mouth and machismo, I'm naughty, nerdy, and lethal. Me hands and my people move the needle on the closed minded for a movement, but rewind it. Land back to the First Nations, I'm saying fire, rage, and smoke all up in our lungs. Why you think I'm banging on these war drums? Here to the streets, favelas and slums. Empty stomach like a punch in the gut. Hating women, why you think we so stuck? On oh, stupid, stupid oh. I'ma need my money, rap it oh. I'm really rapping though. Hush. This massive sound is in my blood. I give the youth them nothing but love. Famous. Look, uh. Ancient as the future, like the earth, I have no ruler passing through on this plane of existence. So distance, so kisses like glitter, stardust, and goddess. We trust fierce fairies destroy the gender binary. Ain't just a flex, it's a hex against the patriarchy. It's all malarkey in our bodies. Uh, bad mouth and machismo, I'm naughty, nerdy, and lethal. Me hands and my people move the needle on the closed minded for a movement, but rewind it. Land back to the First Nations, I'm saying fire, rage, and smoke all up in our lungs. Why you think I'm banging on these war drums? Here to the streets, favelas and slums. Empty stomach like a punch in the gut. Hating women, why you think we so stuck? On oh, stupid, stupid oh. I'ma need my money, rap it oh. I'm really rapping though. Hush. This massive sound is in my blood. I give the youth them nothing but love. Famous. Look, uh. Ancient as the future, like the earth, I have no ruler passing through on this plane of existence. So distance, so kisses like glitter, stardust, and goddess. We trust fierce fairies destroy the gender binary. Ain't just a flex, it's a hex against the patriarchy. It's all malarkey in our bodies. Uh, bad mouth and machismo, I'm naughty, nerdy, and lethal. Me hands and my people move the needle on the closed minded for a movement, but rewind it. Land back to the First Nations, I'm saying fire, rage, and smoke all up in our lungs. Why you think I'm banging on these war drums? Here to the streets, favelas and slums. Empty stomach like a punch in the gut. Hating women, why you think we so stuck? On oh, stupid, stupid oh. I'ma need my money, rap it oh. I'm really rapping though. Hush. This massive sound is in my blood. I give the youth them nothing but love. Famous. Look, uh. Ancient as the future, like the earth, I have no ruler passing through on this plane of existence. So distance, so kisses like glitter, stardust, and goddess. We trust fierce fairies destroy the gender binary. Ain't just a flex, it's a hex against the patriarchy. It's all malarkey in our bodies. Uh, bad mouth and machismo, I'm naughty, nerdy, and lethal. Me hands and my people move the needle on the closed minded for a movement, but rewind it. Land back to the First Nations, I'm saying fire, rage, and smoke all up in our lungs. Why you think I'm banging on these war drums? Here to the streets, favelas and slums. Look, uh, 
ancient as the future like the earth. I have no ruler passing through on this plane of existence. So distance to kisses like glitter, stardust and goddess. We trust fierce fairies destroyed the gender binary. Ain't just a flex, it's a hex against the patriarchy. It's all malarkey in our bodies. Uh, bad mouth and machismo, I'm naughty, nerdy and lethal. Me hands and my people move the needle. Close-minded.
divided, we're less strong like the diet score wars. Talk about it, dance about it. Go on and hit the floor. Our music they adore them. Not ready to explore. Our diving bodies and our souls, so the truth gon' get exposed. Uh, uh. Cause I ain't gon' back to normal. To change everything. We need everyone. To change everything. Hey, hey, everybody, welcome back. Hope you all had a good break, able to take care of yourselves. Um, again, we're super excited. Let's keep the energy going. Uh, the sad part for us is that we cannot see what's happening in the chat over on y'all's end of things. But the good part is we get to be in this lovely virtual green room with the artists here, which lucky us, right? Uh, so we're sending a lot of love over that way. I uh, wish we could be uh, interacting with y'all on that front, but that's all right. Uh, we hope you have been enjoying what you've been seeing so far. Uh, let us know in the chat box, even though we won't be able to see it, uh, some of the highlights that you've been experiencing thus far. We have so much more to show y'all and so little time, but uh, we're going to do our best here. Something that's been key for us is how arts and activist, uh, activism intersect, coexist, or simply are just the same uh, coin with a different side. So I'm going to hand it over to the moderator of the next panel, who happens to be Lael Camargo, uh, to welcome some artists to speak on the importance of artists in activism. Thanks for passing that mic, Trey, that virtual mic, aka your across from me mic. I'm super excited to be here. We just keep saying we're super excited, y'all. For months, we've been like, what is this going to look like? And we're finally here. So it's very exciting for us. And I'm sure you're tired of us hearing us say that we're excited. So why don't you turn it into a drinking game? Whatever you drink is your choice. We're just here for the fun, for the rollout, and to celebrate these dope artists, these dope projects. So I'm going to say it again. I'm excited. And I'm here to talk about arts and activism specifically. I'm going to welcome on Maisie Richards, Chiara Francesca, Kate McNeely and Crystal Clarity. I'm gonna read y'all's bios and then you get to just like say, hey, what's up to folks. All right, Maisie, I'm gonna start with you. Maisie loves rocks and rivers and the things that depend on them. She's an illustrator and visual communicator with an MS in fluvial geomorphology, a BA in geology, that took a mouthful, and a penchant for finding more, uh, patterns that transcend scale. She draws to help herself and others visualize our place amidst the dependence on the complex interconnected ways of ecology and geology forming this precious planet. She's committed to practicing visual communication as a tool to heal the harm caused by white body supremacy and extractive capitalism and to help us envision resilient and generative futures for all beings. Thank you for being here, Maisie. Originally from Italy, and currently residing in Chicago, Chiara is a queer artist, writer, organizer, acupuncturist, immigrant, and former team ma living in multiple disabilities. Their clinical focus is on mental health, trauma, CPTSD, and queer trans health. She is committed to building collaborative spaces for community care and centering collective health in and out of movements for justice. Thanks for joining us, Chiara. Kate McNeely uses she and her pronouns, is a cultural worker, social change strategist, mixed media artist, and radically queerdo storyteller. She works and often lives within various communities and cultures across what we call the United States, helping to make stories of resistance and resilience visible, centering intellectuality and play. She builds spaces where folks gather and create. She believes deeply that if we show up as our fully complicated selves, culture is the brackish water of change and difference where we have the power to directly shape our future world. What up, Kate? <laughs> Lastly, but not least, we have Crystal Clarity. Is She's a teaching artist, an illustrator, a printmaker, art director, dream weaver, and visual strategist for movement moments. Uh, did not include, but is also a farmer and likes to grow stuff. She brings 50 plus years experience directing community mural projects across New York City and beyond. She activates her talents with the singular objective of magnifying our collective ability to imagine and lean into a better world. Her praxis is a passionate sharing of that knowledge through focused mentorship, skill building, and leadership development of the next generation of movement artists. 
What up, y'all? Thank you so much for being here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give a couple seconds of break so y'all can say hi to the folks watching. Hello. Hi, everyone. Really nice to see everyone on this side of it. Wish I could see all the faces on the other side. Good to be here. It's so great to be here. Thank you for having us and for putting this all together. All right, y'all. So I just want to start off just by asking a question. Um, and this one's specifically going to go to Kiara. How does your passion and what you care about influence your art? Oh, my goodness. Um, um, I mean, they're one and the same, um, I would say. Um, yeah, and I, you know, we talked about this before, um, not on live on here, but just the idea of, it's Chiara, by the way, hi, um, of the hierarchy between different ways of being involved in movement work um, and, you know, what it looks like to be on the ground um, and at the front, what, you know, what we call like the front lines of movement work and how as artists um, were often not considered um, within that place and art many times it's, it's seen as kind of something outside of or more abstracted um, and you know um, what what I started really thinking about is how these realities at least in my life right of being a community healthcare worker and making visual stuff end up being more like a circle that keeps on moving right and at any point where one of those aspects um, recedes, um, I can feel how it's actually negatively impacting the rest of the work too, right? So, you know, if I'm doing a lot of frontline work and showing up for folks in community healthcare settings and I'm not doing as much of the abstract thinking or the visual art stuff, my burnout levels get much more, um, elevated, right? Um, and at the same time, if I'm doing a lot of abstract visual art stuff and I'm not on the ground, I start feeling disconnected, right? So they all uh, feed into each other in this way that is necessary. Thank you, Kiara, for that. I think what we're gonna focus here is like, because we're talking about art as activism, everybody's gonna see y'all's pieces and see what you created, but I think it's important for to give y'all space to talk about it. Crystal and Kate, you both created along the lines of grief. It was a very, you know, something that we don't talk about a, a lot, maybe we hide it. And I am curious, why did y'all choose to talk about grief at all? Um, yeah, I mean, I'll go first, Crystal. Um, yeah, grief um, has been something that I've been working on for almost the last decade. And for me, it's that it's part of the making the praxis of what we talk about of how to work into a practice of how we're doing the work. And that at the core of the all of the things that, you know, every group that's on this call works at, whether it's solidarity economy or labor rights, or it's making a shift to a relational space from an extractive space and from an individualistic space. And grief is a huge part of that ability to have strong relationships. If we can't process the relationships that have broken, it's, it's grief is a relational emotion. It's, uh, it is the other side of love, of attachment. And we in movement spaces are holding so many compounded, complicated griefs, our ancestors' griefs, our griefs of the grievances that we're fighting, the griefs of the future, of the dream of when we become powerful, let's grieving the powerlessness that's gone. I mean, there's, it's anticipatory grief. And until we hold that grief, and honor it and work with it, we're gonna fail at holding the relationships that we actually need 
for an economy that's built on relationships like the solidarity economy or for organizing or for anything that we need relationships for, which is frankly the center of the transition that we want. Did I cover it, Crystal? Um, yeah, I mean, I would add that, you know, we talk a lot about um, envisioning this like beautiful healed future, um, but we don't talk about the messy road that it's gonna take to really get there within like, just like confronting some of the harm that we're doing to each other in our relationships, some of the ways that we reproduce the harms of our, you know, toxic learned structures and systems that we've been kind of indoctrinated in like for such a long time and how that's reproduced in our movement work and how much that trips us up and how much it like, you know, damages our relationships, the relationships closest to us, the ones that are most important to us because we're not, actively holding space for and processing um, the consistent grief that we're going through. And a lot of us are just really shut down, really depressed, really grieving, like kind of all the time, the work that we have to do. I kind of live in this like, um, I live in this mutual, like kind of double-sided truth of like feeling really proud of the work I do and feeling really resentful of having to do it at all. Like, and having to like process that and like comb through it at all times and um, and do the work anyway. And the fact that we're, a lot of movement um, folks are like overworked to work in like 24 hours, a day, you know, like 24 seven, like around the clock, kind of, kind of always on in a kind of state of panic. Our nervous systems are like out of control. Like we're, we're dealing with a lot of stuff and we're, we're um, we need to make space for um, the ways that that energy needs to be mitigated, transformed, held, like, you know, catharsis, like, you know, like worked through, reimagined in the way that we're reimagining all these beautiful systems, like we need to reimagine the way that we like hold each other in space and hold each other in our grief around this work. Um, because it's really hard and it's not all beautiful and it's not all, all, all pretty. Um, and some of it is just, it's just deep and dark and, and ugly and we have to, we have to look at it. And be full, right? Like sort of what, you know, what Kiara was saying about being on the, like artists being the, on the front line as well and holding all those parts of yourself and like grief is just as much as part of yourself as the, the joys and the, and you need them both. Word. I mean, I want to say one last thing that like, I wonder sometimes how much further I would have, like I would have gotten or like maybe like some of the agendas or some of the movement work that would have gotten had like there had been space to process working in a prison or like the, the artist working in a prison and like what that does to your soul for a while or like the artist working in you know, these really traumatic frontline situations. And like, you know, we need to hold space for what what that work does to us um, in order to like kind of work, work towards like really building the future that we deserve together. That's what I got. Thanks, Crystal. I'm messaging folks on the back end, apologies if it looks like it, but I have a little bit of a tech question. Um, I know that for me, when I saw the grief piece, it was just very um, enlightening just how y'all's activism really tries to go deep, aside from the structural change and the systemic in the, on the streets work, that it is about that individual realignment of reconnection with emotions. And I think, Kiara, a lot of your pieces just are very much about validation and being in the present of the things that we cannot articulate. And I love the visuals that you give to the words that you speak to. Maisie, a lot of your work is about structural. It's like, how can, what will this new world actually look like? And I think for you specifically, I was curious just what needs to change in order for um, this new world to be possible? You showed us a little bit about it, but what needs to change? Mm. It's a big question. Um, I just love, I just like went on a journey listening to all the, uh, the other artists talk about um, grief was really hitting hard and that relational piece and that sort of orbit, Kiara, that you were talking about. Um, so I think all of that, it's like we <laughs> we need to be working on um, how, how we relate to one another, to our ancestors, to all the beings who are connected 
with um, an understanding that just as Kiara was sort of describing this, this orbit that when something kind of gets out of that sort of cycle, um, you know, they can feel that, um, that we, if we were in tune with our bodies and if we were in tune with our grief, we would feel all the pieces that are out of this, this orbit that we are all a part of. Um, so yeah, I think it's just this reconnection to, um, yeah, Amir was talking about grounding, like reconnect, re recognizing that we, <laughs> we are of rocks, we come from rocks, we're going to go back to being rocks, we come, we are part of water, like, and just really um, honoring that connection to this inherent connection to water, rocks, and all the beings that come from those two things, um, and grieving all the shitty things we've done <laughs> to all the beings connected to all those things. Um, yeah, I'm sure everyone else has some other things to add to that, but those are my thoughts. Thank you, Maisie. I mean, y'all come in from such a holistic perspective. It's very clear that the way that you approach your art, the way you think through what it means to be an artist is very much aligned. And we definitely have a lot to learn of how to keep honoring that work and for us to keep embodying that creative nature that we all have both as activists and as world artists. Thank you so much for your time, Kate, Crystal, Kiara, and Maisie. And I'm grateful that I get to share the space with you. I'll hand it over back to Trey. Yes, thank you, artists, uh, so much for giving a glimpse into your powerful work. It's no doubt that artists continue to play a critical role for so many reasons in, in our movements for liberation. And as stakeholders in these movements, what a powerful force we are when culture and transformative organizing is held together. Uh, speaking of that, up next, we have a project dedicated to much needed culture shifts and how we can all do that in our own ways. This project is co-created by Angelique Kalani Axelrod and Shelton Torbert Jr. and uplifts artists of color and queer artists who live in the South and shine light on individual people who help create the rich culture that exists in Southern communities. The content will consist of video shot uh, six, on 16 millimeter film of the artists akin to experimental documentary footage. Please help me welcome Angelique. Hi, thank you, Trey, for that intro. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Angelique Kalani Axelrod. I use she, her pronouns. Um, right now, I'm sitting in front of a window. I'm wearing a beige sweater, and I have medium-length brown hair. I'm super happy to be here and share a little bit more about my project. Um, my co-collaborator, -collabor Shelton Torbert Jr., wasn't able to make it today, but we worked together to create this multimedia project aimed to just celebrate the contribution of creators, community leaders, artists, and essentially anyone who really works to positively impact their community. Um, and we collaborated and launched the project by bringing together 15 local creatives in Huntsville, Alabama. Um, and we specifically chose this location because Shelton is from Huntsville and he has this huge network of young creative people there. And I was personally super inspired by the large community in Huntsville because I wasn't necessarily you know, I don't think of Alabama as this huge center for creativity. So it really challenged this misconception I had of certain Southern communities. Um, so we worked to bring these people together. We had a chef, a fifth generation farmer, a vintage store owner, a DJ, um, a, some photographers. And we asked them questions like, what does community mean to you? What are principles of a healthy community? And what does it mean to shift culture? Um, and I've really discussed, discussed these concepts in depth in, um, academic settings, you know, about community and supporting local ecosystems, but it felt super important to also have an accessible platform for community members to discuss their experiences and how they've been able to support their community in sustainable ways. Um, so we use 16 millimeter film and digital portraits to create individual Instagram posts for the creatives that we worked with. And then we also created a short documentary style film that's um, soon to be posted on YouTube that's around 10 minutes long where the local creatives came together and discussed their experiences and insights as a group. Um, and it was really just such a beautiful experience to bring that community together. And um, we know with this project that was about community and just seeing them all exchanging numbers at Shelton Studio where we filmed and sharing knowledge behind the scenes was really um, encouraging to experience. Um, and in the longer video, we merged 16 millimeter film with digital content. And we chose to use 16 millimeter film because it conjures a sense of nostalgia that um, community also can 
conjure as well. So we just want this platform to be for people to connect with a variety of trailblazers who are helping build stronger communities. Um, and in the following video, you'll see a, a teaser for the longer video to come. Um, and it starts with the 16 millimeter film footage. And in the background, there is spoken word that we commissioned from a poet in Birmingham, Alabama. Um, and also quickly before we watch this video, I want to um, just shout out our Instagram page and direct people to that if you wanna be up to date on our content. Um, so if you're able to, you can take out your phone now or you can check out the account later. But the, um, the Instagram name is at culture shifters without the vowels in it. So it's C-L-T-R S H F T R S. So it's culture shifters without any of the vowels. Um, and then if you are a culture shifter, you can apply to be featured on our platform with a link in our bio. And I know there are a lot of culture shifters in this crowd. So we'd love to be able to shout y'all out. Um, but yeah, thank you everyone for being here and hope you enjoy the video. You see, we do it for the culture. Make sure our people know their rights just to make sure that our people are all right. Yes, we do it for the culture. For the future of our kids, for the future of ideas and our peers, we do it for the culture. Breaking bread and concepts, speaking truth to make progressive progress. Because the culture, it's true, and the culture is you. Yes, it begins with us, but before we change the world, we have to earn its trust. Thank you, everyone. Beautiful, thank you, Angelique. Uh, shout out to all of our family, all our relatives in the work down in the South right now too. And thank you for uplifting and highlighting your work. It's such a blessing to have you here. Um, I love to see that video um, and the vocals as well. Uh, so up next, we have a project that work with audio interviews and visuals to bring life to the much needed transition of our current economic system. Right now, we're gonna bring in Robin Bean and Ebony to give us a look at what they've been working on. Hello. Hey. I'm Ebony. I'm Robin. And we did a participatory art workshop series for the Creative Wildfire Project. And we centered it around the question of how can we expand our imagination of an economy where we all can thrive while spotlighting examples already happening within our communities. So this is a collaboration between um, Cooperative Journal, which I'm the founder of, and I highlight cooperatives and mutual aid initiatives around the world. And Robin does amazing animation. So we decided to um, create something where we can blend the two, where we could have concrete examples from organizations doing the work in the solidarity economy and mix visual art with it. And we decided to do this in a participatory way because we want to engage artists in the process of co-creation, especially as the solidarity economy is deeply rooted in that. And we also wanted to ask quest the question to artists of what is their role as an artist within the solidarity economy. And we really wanted to share how they can get their basic needs met within it through these concrete examples. Um, and so we made a case story gallery, which is on cooperativejournalmedia.com, where we mixed audios from um, BIPOC organizers that are working within the solidarity economy to share a moment where they felt like the future they dream of was happening in the present. And then um, we invited artists to be inspired by that and create visuals to go along with it. And we really wanted to integrate imagination, tangibility, and real life examples throughout this process. And Robin's gonna tell us about the three-part series that we did. Yes, but first I have to say, we're here together in person, partly because yesterday was Ebony's birthday. Happy birthday, Ebony. I can hear you all cheering. Um, 
And yeah, this whole thing was a big experiment. And in addition to making that content, um, that product, we wanted to also embody these principles in our process as been uh, spoken so far today. So we thought, let's try this participatory art workshop. Um, and we uh, collaborated with the um, Anti-Capitalism for Artists crew, shout out to them, and hosted a cohort of 13 artists, um, some of whom are here today, and we'll show a little peeks of their art. Um, and yeah, so we went from audio to visuals and then to animation, um, all put together in this audio visual gallery. Um, so yeah, you can listen to the audio on there and then in the workshop, that's where the artists sort of digested that audio and those stories that were coming from lived experiences of organizers and digested that through their magical visualization powers. Um, and then we're taking those art pieces, which are standalone products in themselves, and then compiling them into animations to further bring those moments to life. So yeah, the first step of the series was some political ed inspired by uh, what we were hearing in Creative Wildfire and really asking this question of like, what the heck even is the solidarity economy? What is our role in it as artists? How can we get our basic needs met? Um, and how can we then contribute to it with our art? And then the second step was around the co-creation. So we gathered together and listened to all these stories, um, audio stories from the interviews we had collected from projects like land trust, permanent real estate co-ops, worker co-ops, mutual aid networks, taking so many shapes as the solidarity economy does. Um, and then, yeah, we made some art together. And the third step is we talked about how to compile that into animations and talked, we gave some time for like the distribution question, which, I always avoid of uh, like, how do we get this art to people who might want to see it or might need to see it? So we had some strategy brainstorms of like, who needs this story? Who needs this message? How do we get it out there? And that's how we decided to make this website and this gallery. And we're about to play an animation next, right? Our... First, we want to talk a little bit, just to highlight the overall vision of cooperative journal media. So we want it to be a place where people can find um, these moments from people working within the solidarity economy. We want people to listen and experience the effects of it. Um, and we also want to continue doing curriculum design and work. And then you can also go to the cooperative journal podcast where you can get longer case stories. And we really want this to be collaborative. So we want people to reach out to us if you're an educator and you're looking for graphics for your curriculum, um, if you're interested in facilitating a workshop in your community, or if you want your Solidarity Economy initiative to be highlighted by us. So now we can play the animation. And this is an uh, animation from Seed Commons. A lot of us uh, have been excluded from economic security. We are not the people that normally have a seat at the table um, when there are larger economic conversations happening. And we've been working over the last year to buy two abandoned buildings in our neighborhood and convert those to a permanent home um, for our worker cooperative and I was in a meeting recently with some of the other worker owners and a local development organization um, talking about this project and talking about the feasibility of it and it was really clear that people didn't expect us to be able to bring the resources to do this project. People didn't expect us to be able to speak the language of development or to really understand the economic ramifications of what we were trying to do. But we do have those resources. We have those resources because we helped to build them. We helped to build a national financial commons called Seed Commons that's there to give workers like us a seat at the table. Um, in a really structural way that we wouldn't have otherwise.
Thank you all so much for listening to us. And we hope you get a chance to scroll through the website as well. Yeah, there's so much great art and audio on there. And we hope it can be of service to educators out there. So reach out if you want to collaborate. And I think that's about it, right? Yeah. Wow, thank you, Ebony and Robin. Uh, worker cooperatives, seed commons, just transition, living, loving economies. And could we also just talk about your like uh, coordinated outfits and the purple lighting? Because I'm loving it from over here. Y'all are amazing. Uh, <laughs> so thank you so much for your sharing. Um, to, to transition us a little bit, nowadays we're inundated with content and political information. Personally, I love it when I see a beautiful graphic and visual that can convey the things that I'm feeling in the moments that we're navigating right now. So we're gonna get a little bit more into that with someone who did an amazing job of not only bringing to light visuals, but highlighting making those big waves in a portrait series. I'm gonna go ahead and bring on Luis Ledris. Thank you all. Hi, I am so honored to be in this space. I'm so excited to show you all the process of creating the illustration series, which I creating a new normal. Um, is the deck available to um, queue? Awesome, thank you so much. Um, so again, my name is Louise Ledris. I'm calling in from Southern Paiute land, um, also known as Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, as Trey mentioned, I created an illustration and story series, um, interviewing creatives, finding new paths forward, especially after the pandemic. Next slide, please. Before I get into the whole project, I just want to ground us with this quote first that Daisy, one of the people I interviewed said, she said, quote, our creativity is our liberation from what the colonizer has built, end quote. And I feel like all these arts artworks that have been presented today is just an example of this in action. And I'm really excited to be a part of that movement. Next slide. So the following slides are actually the final illustrations that I've created from this project. And with this project, I really intended to make sure I was depicting a variety of stories and a variety of fields. So Vina is a designer, Marcus is an illustrator, Daisy is a researcher and curator. Next slide. Erica is a chef, Kevin is a creative director, me, I'm an illustrator and a designer. Next slide. Sabah is a multidisciplinary artist and Chloe is a filmmaker. So all of these amazing creatives, I got a chance to talk to about their journey and all the huge pivotal mov movements that they made as a result of the pandemic. And it was really a challenge to make that happen, but here we are. Um, but before I go into the details of how that was that process was, I want to give some background info. So next slide. So we're going to get a little personal here. So this is me pictured six different ways across the pandemic at various physical and mental and emotional states. <laughs> at the time, I was a full time designer at an ad agency in New York City. I felt like I was working all of the time and this is not a unique experience to people who work in the commercial creative industry. And at a certain point with especially all the social issues that have been brought up and the pressures that we are facing as a result of the climate crisis, I just came to a point of like, do I just take care of myself and move up in my own corporate creative career and probably burn out <laughs> from the hours or take a risk and figure out what is it like to be a part of the movement and be an artist and create art for my own community. And in that process, I met a lot of people who are already thinking this way. And I came across this grant project and I've never been an artist before <laughs> in, in this sort of setting. And it was really humbling and exciting to be in this space. And I, I just realized I needed to capture this cultural shift in a lot of creatives, especially in commercial industries who aren't aware of the language and the actions that we need to take in this movement. Next slide. 
So in my outreach outreach form that I sent to all kinds of different people and all my social media platforms, this was one of the first questions I asked. I said, imagine you were in January 2020. What did you think your year was going to look like? And I got a lot of answers and a, such a variety of interesting experiences. A lot of people had just were blindsided. A lot of people were just ready for change. And I originally proposed three portraits for this project and it came out to a total of eight. <laughs> Cause I just could not just, I could not just depict only a few stories. Um, next slide. But the main problem here is, I guess, like what many of the artists have been explaining here is like, how do we execute such abstract concepts to people, to people who are seeing the art and even to ourselves. So the question of visualizing grief and growth, which was a common concept, common concepts that were brought up in everyone's responses. Um, that was a challenge and I had to figure out how do I exactly depict that as the artist. Next slide. And I figured I just needed to listen. I just needed to talk and I just needed to take notes. On the slide, you'll see a bunch of different documents, video calls, screenshots, files and files and emails that I had to kind of be set as a foundation to create the artwork. And after a lot of trial and error and kind of thinking to myself and processing and sketching, Next slide. I kind of landed on this um, formula that would allow me to kind of give um, a unique way of depicting each portrait and each story in a symbolic way, but also kind of making it a unit so that people who come across this on social media, which is the main community platform now is just it needs to be easily accessible and easily digestible. So how can I pull people in and then get the information down into their minds? So I landed on the system of using color, shapes, and pattern as the way to symbolize the stories. So for example, in Daisy's example, which you see here is an artboard of my workspace. Um, she explained that her growth during the pandemic felt like a sunburst exploding. And so her layout that I created is kind of mimicked, uh, mi mimicking a sunburst-like explosion. And there are a lot of Easter eggs that you can find in each individual portrait. Um, when you read the stories, maybe you'll be able to catch the symbols that are um, kind of encased in these portraits. Next slide. So these are all the portraits. I wish I had the time to digest and take you through every single story, but these stories will be available on my website and on my socials as infographics and reels and website uh, a website page um, where you can learn about each individual story. And I really hope that these stories inspire a lot of people who are figuring out what is their next move and how can they change the way they move forward, especially since we can't just move past what happened this past year. Um, and I want to end on the quote in the next slide from Claude. Oh, sorry, actually, I also created an interactive zine activity. If you would like to reflect yourself on your own, you can print this zine out on your own. And I've created drawing and writing prompts for you to reflect and you could even create your own portrait for yourself and have a moment of reflection and create art too. Next slide. Next, oops. <laughs> is, is there a next slide? Thank you. So this is the quote I wanted to end on um, from Chloe. She said, quote, I'm starting to imagine new ways and systems of being. These systems and ideas that we've been made to believe in never served us in the first place. And I just want to extend that challenge to all of you um, to figure out new ways of being and how can you create that within yourself 
there's a lot of amazing artists on this panel, but you yourself can also figure out your own art or your own way and your own actions. So next slide. So yeah, thank you. Uh, you can screenshot this. This will be the platforms that all the content will be on. Um, and we're excited to see how this project moves forward. Thank you so much again to everyone who's organized this space. Thank you so much, Louise. I just love how thoughtful you were and how all the elements kind of played and flow. We never really think about how much if you dive deep into a piece how much you can see different elements of it so i was really excited to be able to see that and to see your process evolve through it so much inquiry and so much thought well this showcase is evolving we don't have that much time left but i'm so excited for y'all to keep seeing before we jump in i just want to give a shout out to our comrades of the new economy coalition climate justice alliance they really helped us create and were in deep collaboration around creative wildfire up next, we do have an augmented reality project. During these times of reimagining, having a bit of imagination, inspiration doesn't hurt. And Alice's project definitely doesn't come short from imagination. She's gonna hop on here and tell us more about what her project is and the tool that she's using, which is augmented reality, which just kind of blows my mind when I think about it. I wanna bring onto the stage, Alice, Jay, and Nalia. All right, y'all. So Nyla, Jay, and Alice, y'all collaborated on this augmented reality project. And I would just love it if y'all could take us through just some of the stuff that y'all were able to make. So uh, hi, everybody. We're excited to be here. And first of all, we'll just uh, let the work speak for itself. So um, we'll go ahead and show a little preview video. And at this time, if you have, your um, mobile device, you can actually scan the code and open it up on your phone and Instagram. So we'll go with that. So that's our project and I'll briefly describe it for the interpreter as well. Um, so what you, um, what was shown on the screen just uh, uh, a minute ago is um, you start off with this augmented reality filter on Instagram that, um, you know, opens up to your face and this slime comes out of your mouth with a seed. Um, and then it prompts you to turn your camera. So you're looking around and there are um, five different kind of husks of plants or cracks of these plants with each with a seed in it that you kind of send down and the slime comes through and um, you know the seed goes through each of the plants. And then when you tap on each plant, you can actually kind of conjure it. It comes to life in your environment. You get to meet it, embody a presence with it. and 
um, and you get to learn its indigenous name, one of the indigenous names um, that it carries. And all five of the plants are kind of wept around you in this nest that we think of as solidarity, cross-cultural diasporic solidarity that we think about as um, really a tribute to um, the BIPOC seed keepers that have been you know, really doing this work for grounding us in um, the histories of the plants, um, some of which we got to honor in this project, um, you know, and, and the various stories that we'll tell you about in a little bit. Um, but a few slides, please. Um, so I'm here with my amazing collaborators, uh, Jay Carlin, who is a movement artist and really helped uh, think through with us um, the the way that this piece actually comes out through the space and interacts with our bodies, thinking about slime, et cetera. And we also have Nyla Hunter here, who is a sound composer, harpist, incredible musician that we had the trio of working with um, to really bring this piece to life um, as a multimedia artwork. So the wait, so next slide. <laughs> We're so excited to be here to share this project with y'all. Next, oh yeah, okay. So yeah, this is our this is a slide on our working process, and then here you see a photo of okra. And we have been, you know, this the okra has been central to this project, and we talked a lot about it. Um, you know. Uh, so Nai has African Caribbean roots and Jay has Filipino roots um, and we had, you know, and I'm of Chinese American um, descent and I, you know, we, we talked a lot about this as kind of like a through line of our understanding of our own histories, of our own, you know, what we remember, what we don't remember, how we think about colonization and um, yeah, what seed keeping really means to us. Um, and then next slide. These are some of the thoughts and um, really insights and reflections that have come up, emerged um, through this process of really conversation and research and just thinking with each other's histories, starting from our own stories. Jay, want to say anything about this? I feel like a lot of this is from your yeah. brain too. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. Um, yeah, a lot of these things, I mean, I've even hearing some of the previous artists speak, I'm um, hearing like that, like we are um, rocks or, or we come from rocks and we will become rocks. We are seeds, we are a part of this earth. So looking at we are seeds, um, I'll do an embodied exercise in a bit about how, how we used our imagination to kind of embody this augmented reality and create this augmented reality experience. Um, and then also thinking about how water and all the different all the different elements play a factor in um, in not just um, uh, you know growing plants, but also the the concept of seed keeping and and climate change and yeah. Yeah, and is our own bodies and, you know, it begins and comes back around to, you know, like the slime in us, the saliva, um, as this like living matter, and then it comes back out to, you know, the ecosystemic body that we want to care for um, and be allies to together and entangled and, and, and interdependent solidarity um, moving forward. Next slide. Um, so you'll see in the piece that there, you know, we really took care to bring in the indigenous names. Of course, each of these plants has multiple names, um, but we wanted to call in really ancestors and um, lineage uh, through these plants because they're not they're not just plants, but they are our ancestors and they are, you know, they hold so many stories. And so that's kind of the magic of, of seed keeping. So, um, you know, the okra goes by Kuruma, um, which is Ghanaian Twi, um, but it also goes by Bindi and Hindi and some others, some other names. Um, and there are also, of course, um, sea keeping uh, farms and initiatives such as the Sankofa Community Farm that um, that really uplifts African heritage plants like this. Um, the bitter melon you see uh, on the right is um, goes by Ampalaya. That's Jay's ancestor, um, Filipino mm -hmm. roots, but it also goes by 
Kukwa in Chinese um, and, uh, and you know many other languages. And um, the seeds come from Resilient Roots Farm, which is um, a Vietnamese-led farm in Camden. So we're really like bringing in um, the work and just feeling really inspired and wanted to uplift and amplify the work on the ground that's happening right now that y'all can help out with as well if you live close to them or check check out you know their seeds online and try planting these yourself. Um, the wild rice, um, uh, manumin is actually means good berry and Ojibwe, um, and corn maize, of course. Um, and there's an indigenous uh, seeding, um, you know, effort called Sierra Seas, um, and tomato, um, means so much to all of us. And, um, the original, uh, word uh, tomato is from Nahuatl, uh, which is uh, the Aztecs. Um, and we were also thinking a lot about the Moya Mensing tomatoes, which is this whole story of, you know, seeds that were four generation, generations ago given to, um, you know, uh, Black folks in, in prisons and, um, and the in Philadelphia and has passed down since then as a really a seed for you know resistance and resilience of incarcerated folks. And so yeah, through all of all of all of these seeds that we and, and plants that we got to really reflect on and honor, um, there's so many more um, to come. And and the okra is, has been kind of the mother pathway um, sliming us through. And you look at all the dishes; um, these plants are all in in collaboration. Um, ancestrally with, with the okra. Um, so yeah, we invite you to explore and share the, the piece and tell us about your own stories. You can reach us on the gram um, and wherever else on the internet. And meanwhile, um, we wanted to give the floor to Jay for a bit to lead us into a little embodied exercise since we're here. Awesome. Thank you, Alice. Wow, that was very thorough. You're so wonderful at that. I wish um, Nyla could like play music as I do this, but um, <laughs> the music is awesome. Thank you, Nyla. Um, so in one of the previous slides, it said imagination is real. And that's kind of the impetus for this entire project. And if um, we want to make like human involved change occur, you have to imagine it first, right? Like whether it's like, I want to have a healthier body or if I want social change, it must be imagined. Um, and, you know, especially after this pandemic, we talk about reimagining uh, a, a, a new future. So if imagination is real, <laughs> let's imagine we're all holding a lemon right now. Yeah, so feel the weight of the lemon um, and examine it, feel the mass, really imagine that it's there. Maybe you could even squeeze it. You could see it's a slice of a lemon. Yeah, so you could see the yellow rind. Go ahead and give it a smell, give it a little squeeze. And maybe you see the white of the pith. Maybe you see the juice of the pulp. And using our imaginations, we're gonna take a bite of this. Ready, one, two, three. So if you have a, strong imagination, maybe you're beginning to salivate. Maybe you're beginning to make like a, a Sour Patch Kid face or something. Um, but if you're salivating right now, you using your imagination were able to in fact shift your biological makeup. You're able to change your physiology by just using your imagination. So I use this little anecdote this little embodied anecdote to kind of prime me as I imagine the dances that I make, the augmented realities that I'm a part of, <laughs> the actual realities that I'm a part of, the social justice work that I'm a part of. Um, and I hope that you can, um, I don't know, with this imagination series, make lemonade. <laughs> all right, thank you all. Whoa. Trey, you're on. Oh, my bad. I'm sorry. Whoa, I was like really into that. Um, all right. So thank you all so much for introducing, for bringing us into your augmented realities, uh, for your embodied practice. Um, just so much excitement there. Really, really appreciate y'all for your work. Can't wait to see more. Um, so today's show, this evening, we have brought us to the point 
of so many highlights, right? And like we said, there's just not enough time to capture all of the goodness that's here. But tonight has been about show showcasing artists who have put so much love and intention to create, to light up our, our imagination around what's possible as we resist the current pushback to a very toxic, not normal, and instead continue to build a just transition and a just recovery from the detrimental impacts of this pandemic of racial climate capitalism on our front lines communities. We wanna thank you for visioning with and building strategy in all of the ways that you do towards regeneration, care, interdependence, stewardship of land and economies, people power, and the well-being of this earth and all living things. I'm so grateful for each of you. And I can't think of a better way to close this session until next time than with an incredible, incredible movement leader, visionary, poet, artist, and co-director of Climate Justice Alliance. And just, you know, one of those people that you talk to that you see and you're like, wow, you're just genuinely pure goodness and brilliance. That's this person. I wanna ask you all to help me welcome Monica Atkins. Hey, peace, peace, everybody. Oh, thank you, Trey, for that introduction. I'm so grateful to be here and yeah, experience just all the fire that just ex just exists in our movement and um, yeah, the thoughtfulness like that these cultural workers um, have brought into what's been illustrated today. And yeah, just the ways that folks are like controlling the narrative. Definitely want to shout out our interpretation team, uh, our tech gurus, and yeah, definitely want to shout out on behalf of Climate Justice Alliance, New Economy Coalition and Movement Generation, but yeah, creating space um, for the work like this to exist. I wrote a piece that I'll just hop straight into, and I think I'll call it Fire Within. Nobody asked you who you were or where you were from. Never asked your dialect, just stripped your native tongue. Stolen land from chosen ones, yet still on the throne drinking nectar with God. What were the odds that you'd be the one they applaud? Nobody asked for permission for us to become commodity. Exploited from the depths of our souls to the soles of our feet, all for the dollar that drenches of our blood. See, this poem started with rage and tears. For the centuries, our communities have paid the price. For the mismanagement of home, we have paid with our lives like corporation gases ain't breathed into our lungs. Like the government is literally giving tax break to all of our predators. I said, ain't enough money in your corporate earth funds to undo the damage that's been done. See, there's no picture that's big enough to paint the colors of violence our peoples have gone through. So let us tell our story, uplifting all this truth. Let us remember us in our armor, covered by a covenant not offered to them, jealous that our mother's hand is mightier than theirs. So they like to play pretend that they're rulers of resources that they never really own. But we will always rise up. See, we be our refuge and we are more than enough, made from our mama's stuff and build up, build to tread over circumstance and scorpions and come out untouched, seemingly immortal to them. Like God's communicating with the spirit world, with our oppressors at our neck, gulping for air, let the last breath be outrage, causing the sleep to wake up, calling the warriors to rise up. They never seen us turn into God so fast, chanting and taking space up in the streets, Channeling our ancestors' energy, communicating the trauma and anger withheld, marching to the same beat of we got we, and there will be no mercy for the hatred. So let the record read that we've been far too patient for our turn at liberation. So let us dream here together. Under conditions ideal, not ideal, but yet and still divine knowing that this time for alignment forges new paths through reflection and through understanding. Be open about our past struggles of the past and the present. Acknowledge this moment is sacred. Our uprising in every form to break the status quo and birth a new nation while swimming in the contradictions of its extractive foundation. See, may your conversations create committees that center the communities that are least consulted, but most impacted. 
lay it all down for them, like the dinner tables that they were never invited to, choose freedom over famine for the generations depending on you to build the new, knowing that neoliberal politics did not save us before. So let us know war of a new kind, the one where spirit meets mind, speak truth to heal the land, organizing ourselves towards self-governance, personal to political, as a root in the ritual of tearing shit down by any means for liberty and justice for all. Let us learn to take what is ours without permission while fighting to change the rules. And in our daily practice to be principled, may we dismantle the master's tools we cannot carry on this journey. Do the work of unlearning and unearthing what our ancestors would not let us forget, our commitment to rekindling the fire that is within. Thank y'all. Beautiful, thank you so much, Monica, <clears throat> for closing us out like that. Um, wow, y'all, I am so, so incredibly uh, grateful right now and so excited, as Lael said earlier, as we said so many times tonight, uh, to continue forth in this in this beautiful work that we're doing, um, moving with with culture, with arts, uh, transformative organizing work together. Um, I wanted to give a big thank you to each of the artists for sharing your beautiful, powerful work. I want to shout out all of you from joining in from all of the places that you are, from Richmond to South Carolina, from Buffalo to Portland to Detroit to Phoenix and beyond. We love y'all. Um, thank you to the MG Familia. Thank you to the logistics crew behind Rekindle, behind Creative Wildfire, New Economy Coalition, and Climate Justice Alliance. And big shout out to On Point Productions for making all of this possible. And anybody else I forgot, please know from the heart, thank you. Specifically, we want to thank our funders, uh, the Women Donors Network, the California Endowment, the 11th Hour Project. And you can follow the artists on creativewildfire.com backslash artists backslash. If you're able to support artists through resharing their work, following them and or finding their Venmo or PayPal cash up, feel free to look them up, find their, uh, their hyperlinks to their platforms through that website. Arts and culture is severely underfunded and supporting organizations like Movement Generation, Climate Justice Alliance and New Economy Coalition through work like this is important. And you can also support artists directly themselves. We will need cultural workers in order to imagine this new normal. So let's go ahead, like Monica said, let's go rekindle that fire and let's move on. Thank you so much, y'all, for coming and attending this uh, Resist and Build Creative Wildfire Artist Showcase. Um, it's been a great, a great time with me. I'm out. Lyle Kumar, go out. normal cause I'm ready for change rearrange a whole dynamic people over profits no more profits over planet normal was grinding normal was minding my business is futurable but that's delusional it ain't suitable I like to dream like a scene let's describe the inscrutable I break cages in your brain they tried to make us go insane say we couldn't feel the pain from Haiti to the JA work to death what's the payday oh that's chocolate to rock with in the cradle of humanity my black imagination can never reach capacity fact is black is so rich it's impossible to mess with that's why i'm crying then i'm laughing like the grills in the middle passage that's why i'm dancing and i'm resting go on and tell the masses uh divided we're less strong like the dias for wars twerk about it dance about it go on and hit the floor our music they adore them not ready to explore our diving bodies and our souls so the truth gonna get exposed uh uh because i ain't going to change everything we need everyone to change everything, we need everyone. Life is all organisms working to survive these changes. Our bodies mostly water, still in our hearts, fire rages. Burning to light our paths, so scientific that it's spiritual. The earth is humming, humming, an ancestral drumming. We're running out of time. We're running out of time. The end is near, or is it the beginning? 
Yeah, I think it's the beginning. Yeah, yeah, it's the beginning. I ain't going back to normal because I'm ready for change. Rearrange a whole dynamic. People over profits. No more profits over planet. Normal was great.